Hi everyone, welcome to Koan's Kitchen. For today's video, I'm going to share with you guys how I make the mackerel onigiri chasuke, which is another dish from Shokugeki no Soma. Compared to the thick pot rolls, this dish is relatively simple and easy to make. Both onigiri and chasuke are traditional Japanese food that often use leftover rice. But for this video, I'm showing you guys how I cook the sushi rice as well. So, let's start making it! This recipe is good for two people. For the salted kelp tea, you need 25 gram of dried kelp, approximately 700 ml of water, and one teaspoon of sea salt. For the origiri, the ingredients include two mackerel fillets, 150 gram of sushi rice, and approximately 200 ml of water. For the most authentic experience, the origiri of this dish should include some shio kompu as well but it could be difficult to find it outside Japan, so you may skip this ingredient. You may also replace a shio kombu with nori, but do note that they are different things. Shio kombu is salted kelp, while nori is seaweed. Last but not least, I'm using parsley for garnish here, but feel free to replace it with something else if you prefer so. To make this dish, first cook the rice. Weigh and put the sushi rice into a saucepan and wash it a few times until the water becomes clear. Pour away the last round of water that you use for washing the rice and then pour in approximately 200ml of water into the saucepan. Make sure the water covers all the rice. Let the rice soak for 20 to 30 minutes until they are all white. After that, cover the lid and heat it up with high heat until it starts to boil. Usually it takes around 5 minutes. Then, change to low heat and simmer it for 10 minutes. Keep the lid on for the whole time. After you change the heat to low heat for the rice, start preparing the macro fillets. Dry the fillets with kitchen towel and then cut each of them into 6 chunks. I like to cut the fillets before pan frying them so that I have more crispy sides, but you can surely cut them after pan frying if you prefer so. Now, season the skin side of the macro with a few pinches of sea salt. Now, it should be around 10 minutes that the rice is cooked on low heat. Turn off the heat but keep the lid on so that the rice continues to be steamed by the remaining heat for approximately 10 more minutes. Meanwhile, heat up a pan. Once it is hot enough, turn to low heat and pour in a generous amount of oil of your choice. I'm using olive oil here, but you can also use butter or something else. Now, put in the macro skin down. It is natural for the middle of the macro to curl up, but as they cook, they will come down eventually. If you're pan frying the whole fillet, you will have to press it down for a few seconds. Now, tilt the pan and use a spoon to pour the hot oil on top of the mackerel to cook the flesh as well. It is a French technique called poil. Do excuse my poor pronunciation. This technique is good for keeping the meat juicy. Now, after the macro turns white and the side turns golden, you can transfer the macro onto a plate with the skin up. The skin should not be sticking to the pan, but if they are, let it fry in the oil for a little bit longer, then with a few gentle push, they should come off easily. Now, you can see that all the skin of the macro chunks are crispy and golden. The whole process of pan frying the fish should take around 10 minutes. Now you can see that the rice is ready. If you have the shio kombu, you can now mix the shio kombu with the rice. The amount of shio kombu is up to your personal preference and how salty your shio kombu is. In general, you don't really need too much because shio kombu is really salty. After you mix in the shio kombu, let it cool down a bit before you make them into the origiri. Meanwhile, prepare the origiri workstation. Here you can see the rice that is cooling down, an empty rice bowl, a bowl with drinking water, 
The plate of pan fried mackerel and a plate of parsley as the garnish. To prepare the parsley, simply rinse and dry them with kitchen towel. Then remove the stems since we only need the leaves for garnish. The bowl of drinking water is for keeping your hands wet, so that when you make the origiri, the rice will not stick onto your hand too much. Alternatively, you can also use a cling film to keep the rice from sticking onto your hand. Now, to make the origiri, wet both of your hands with the drinking water, then put a generous amount of rice onto one of your palms and create a dent in the middle. Put in the two chunks of mackerel, then cover them with more rice. After that, apply some pressure with both hands to shape it into a rice ball. The traditional shape for the origiri is triangular, so if you can, try making it so. Adding more rice should you see feet, and wet your hands again if the rice starts to stick onto your hand. After you shape the origiri, put it into the rice bowl, and then put a chunk of mackerel on top of the origiri and some parsley as the garnish. Now you have one origiri done. Repeat the process for the second origiri, and after you finish, put it in another rice bowl. You may notice already that you will not use all the mackerel chunks in this process. It is true that you can't really put in more mackerels into the origiri. However, my experience is that the three chunks are not enough when the origiri becomes the chasuke later, and I do prefer having some extra mackerel. That's why this recipe calls for two macro fillets instead of just one. Now, after you make the two origiri, you can start making the salted kelp tea. In a saucepan, put in the dried kelp, the salt, and the water. Note: if you put in the shio kombu in your origiri already, you may want to skip the salt so that the whole dish will not be too salty. Now, bring the mixture to a boil. And you should see that it gradually changes to a greenish color. Then you can pour it into the bowl of origiri and make it into the chasuke. Now you have the macro origiri chasuke. Happy to serve, or I should say, osomatsu. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment down below and let me know what you think about this recipe and your experience of making it. Please also like and subscribe to this channel for more cooking or baking videos in the future. See you next time in Cole's Kitchen.